Okay, good morning. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan, on this Monday, this Memorial Day, in the year of uh, May 29th, in the year of our Lord, 2023. I'm glad you can join us as we begin our week, sort of, uh, in a holiday kind of way, with God's Word and prayer. So this will be a slightly abbreviated, uh, abbreviated version. Uh, as I record this, will be of course, heading over to the Memorial Day program here in town, so um, I'm pre-recording this, so we cannot invite you to submit additional prayer requests, and we'll just conclude with the Lord's Prayer after the reading itself. So, um, but we are now into week 22, can you believe it? We're almost halfway through the year. Week 22, day one of reading through the Old Testament in 2023, and that brings us to 1 Kings chapter 7, which you see on the screen behind me. So David has died, Solomon is now king, and the book of 1 Kings records uh, his reign, and he's, at the moment, he's um, conducting quite a building project. All right, so I think we're all set, so let's begin. 1 Kings chapter 7. Solomon was building his own house 13 years, and he finished his entire house. He built the house of the forest of Lebanon. Its length was 100 cubits, and its breadth 50 cubits, and its height 30 cubits. And it was built on four rows of cedar pillars with cedar beams on the pillars, and it was covered with cedar above the chambers that were on the forty-five pillars, fifteen in each row. There were window frames in three rows and window opposite window in three tiers. All the doorways and windows had square frames and window was opposite window in three tiers. And he made the hall of pillars. Its length was fifty cubits and its breadth thirty cubits. There was a porch in front with pillars and a canopy in front in front of them. And he made the hall of the throne, where he was to pronounce judgment, even the hall of judgment. It was finished with cedar from floor to rafters. His own house, where he was to dwell, in the other court back of the hall, was of like workmanship. Solomon also made a house like this hall for Pharaoh's daughter, whom he had taken in marriage. All these were made of costly stones, cut according to measure, sawed with saws back and front, even from the foundation to the coping, and from the outside to the great court. The foundation was of costly stones, huge stones, stones of eight and ten cubits. And above were costly stones, cut according to measurement, and cedar. The great court had three courses of cut stone all around, and a chorus of cedar beams, so had the inner court of the house of the Lord and the vestibule of the house. And King Solomon sent and brought Hiram from Tyre. He was the son of a widow of the tribe of Naphtali, and his father was a man of Tyre, a worker in bronze. And he was full of wisdom, understanding, and skill for making any work in bronze. He came to King Solomon and did all his work. He cast two pillars of bronze. Eighteen cubits was the height of one pillar, and a line of twelve cubits measured its circumference. It was hollow, and its thickness was four fingers. The second pillar was the same. He also made two capitals of cast bronze to set on the tops of the pillars. The height of the one cap capital was five cubits, and the height of the other capital was five cubits. There were lattices of checker work with wreaths of chain work for the capitals on the tops of the pillars, a lattice for the one capital, and a lattice for the other capital. Likewise, he made pomegranates in two rows around the one lattice work to cover the capital that was on the top of the pillar, and he did the same with the other capital. 
Now the capitals that were on the tops of the pillars in the vestibule were of lily work, four cubits. The capitals were on two, the two pillars and also above the rounded projection which was beside the lattice work. There were two hundred pomegranates in two rows all around, and so with the other capital. He set up the pillars at the vestibule of the temple. He set up the pillar on the south and called its name Jachin. And he set up the pillar on the north and called its name Boaz. And on the tops of the pillars was lily work. Thus the work of the pillars was finished. Then he made the sea of cast metal. It was round, ten cubits from brim to brim, and five cubits high, and a line of thirty cubits measured its circumference. Under its brim were gourds for ten cubits, compassing the sea all around. The gourds were in two rows cast with it when it was cast. It stood on twelve oxen, three facing north, three facing west, three facing south, and three facing east. The sea was set on them, and all their rear parts were inward. Its thickness was a handbreadth, and its brim was made like the brim of a cup, like the flower of a lily. It held two thousand baths. He also made ten stands of bronze. Each stand was four cubits long, four cubits wide, and three cubits high. This was the construction of the stands. They had panels, and the panels were set in the frames, and on the panels that were set in the frames were lions, oxen, and cherubim. On the frames, both above and below the lions and oxen, there were wreaths of beveled work. Moreover, each stand had four bronze wheels and axles of bronze, and at the four corners were supports for a basin. The supports were cast with wreaths at the side of each. Its opening was within a crown that projected upward one cubit. Its opening was round, with, as a pedestal was made, a cubit and a half deep. At its opening there were carvings, and its panels were square, not round. And the four wheels were underneath the panels. The axles of the wheels were of one piece with the stands, and the height of a wheel was a cubit and a half. The wheels were made like a chariot wheel. Their axes, their rims, their spokes, and their hubs were all cast. There were four supports at the four corners of each stand. The supports were of one piece with the stands. And on the top of the stand there was a round band half a cubit high. And on the top of the stand its stays and its panels were of one piece with it. And on the surfaces of its stays and on its panels he carved cherubim, lions, and palm trees according to the space of each, with wreaths all around. After this manner he made the ten stands. All of them were cast alike of the same measure and the same form. And he made ten basins of bronze. Each basin held forty baths, each basin measured four cubits, and there was a basin for each of the ten stands. And he set the stands, five on the south side of the house, and five on the north side of the house, and he set the sea at the southeast corner of the house. Hiram also made the pots, the shovels, and the basins, so Hiram finished all the work that he did for King Solomon on the house of the Lord. The two pillars, the two bowls of the capitals that were on the tops of the pillars, and the two lattice works to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the tops of the pillars, and the four hundred pomegranates for the two lattice works, two rows of pam pomegranates for each lattice work, to cover the two bowls of the capitals that were on the pillars, the ten stands, and the ten basins on the stands, and the one sea and the twelve oxen underneath the sea. Now the pots, the shovels, and the basins, all these vessels in the house of the Lord, which Hiram made for King Solomon, were of burnished bronze. 
In the plain of the Jordan, the king cast them, in the clay ground between Succoth and Zarethan. And Solomon left all the vessels unweighed, because there were so many of them. The weight of the bronze was not ascertained. So Solomon made all the vessels that were in the house of the Lord, the golden altar, the golden table for the bread of the presence, the lampstands of pure gold, five on the south side and five on the north, before the inner sanctuary, the flowers, the lamps, and the tongs of gold, the cups, snuffers, basins, dishes for incense, and fire pans of pure gold, and the sockets of gold for the doors of the innermost part of the house, the most holy place, and for the doors of the nave of the temple. Thus all the work that King Solomon did on the house of the Lord was finished. And Solomon brought in the things that David his father had dedicated, the silver, the gold, and the vessels, and stored them in the treasuries of the house of the Lord. Thus far, 1 Kings chapter 7. So this is one of those days when the best explanation of this text seems like it would probably be uh, drawings of these items that are being described so we can kind of help get our minds around what they looked like. Or even pictures of modern recreations. And I apologize for not doing that. I'll, I'll try to remember to, uh, to, to find some of those um, t for tomorrow, but in the meantime, feel free to uh, to see what you can find online. I'm sure there are a number of examples of people who have recreated these items. Uh, but very briefly, uh, one of the things that intrigues me here is the the details that are included. Anyone who has ever heard a four-year-old try to tell a story knows that selecting the details that are important when you tell a story is important itself. It's, it's crucial. But also, as you're describing events, the things that you choose to include and the things that you choose not to include, that says a lot about your priorities about what you consider to be important. And that's certainly true here, not only not only in the detail into which they go with regard to uh, the, the items in the temple, right? the fact that they went into such detail with the items in the temple really says quite a bit, but also the fact that uh, well, also the, the smaller details that they include about, about these items being decorated with, with pomegranates, uh, decorated with cherubim, decorated with palm trees. Uh, these are not things necessarily at all, except for the cherubim. These are not things that we would probably uh, think to put on those uh, on, on something special that we were building. I don't think pomegranates would be considered very impressive to people who came after us. But for them, in that day, in that time, in that place, I'm sure that was a sign of, of, of wealth, a sign of really something special. And, um, yeah, there, there's something very appealing to me about that. Because worship, it, we have the privilege of worshiping in a way that's very much tied to the way that God's people have worshipped for millennia. Kind of the basic structure, the very basic outline 
of readings and a sermon and the sacrament and prayers, that ties us in with God's people from the last several centuries, not just the last 2,000 years, but beyond that. And yet at the same time, each culture, each place, each time, finds its own way to express how special uh, that place of worship and what we do there is. We do, in fact, receive the gifts, the benefits of what Christ did for us on the cross. And all of the specific forms may shift slightly. We do. We, we have the privilege, in some cases, of using the very same words that people, God's people have used for millennia, but at least worshiping in much the same way as they did. And through it all, God continues to pour out his gifts to you through the power of the Holy Spirit. So here too, even in these small details, we see God carrying out his plan of salvation in real time, in real places, among real people, through real events, and according to what he's done for you in Jesus Christ. So again, uh, we will go back to our fuller prayers tomorrow. But in the meantime, let's close with the Lord's Prayer. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All right, as always, thank you for joining us as we begin our day and our week with God's word and prayer. Uh, sanctified by that word of God in prayer, go joyfully to whatever work he may have for you, and hopefully that is celebrating and remembering uh, the sacrifice of our, our armed forces and so many who have given their lives. Uh, and in that vein, we wish you God's blessings on your day.